New York, Providence, and Boston Railroad was chartered in 1832 to connect New York and Boston by rail. They would only end up building a main line between Stonington, Connecticut, and way in the southeast corner to Providence, which doesn't really get anywhere close to New York or Boston. So the way that would work is you get on a steamboat in New York and you'd sail across Long Island Sound to Stonington, where you'd get on one of their trains and it would take you to Providence, where you'd then get on a ferry boat and cross the, the harbor at Providence, and then you'd get onto a train for the uh, Boston and Providence Railroad, and that's how you'd get to Boston. Which, I, it worked for the time, I guess. The company would last until uh, 1895, I believe. They would, they would expand service to Groton, I believe, as well as other little feeder lines. and. This locomotive, Stonington, was one of the first six engines that they ordered. I have no idea which order they were delivered in. They were named Stonington, Pawkatuck, Appanog, uh, Rhode Island, Little Rest, and Greenwich. Uh, they were almost all identical and had the same relatively small design. Uh, Stonington and I believe either Greenwich or Rhode Island had slightly larger cylinders and slightly smaller driving wheels, which for me thinks that they were made for uh, more freight service than passenger service. There's not a lot of details on them. Making them was kind of, making Stonington was kind of easy because the design was very similar to uh, Robert Stevenson's Planet locomotive, which I'd already made a model of, so it was just sort of changing the colors and pretty much that. Uh, the problem was uh, trying to figure out all these nice little things on top of the boiler and firebox, because while the company that built it, the Locks and Canals Company of Lowell, Massachusetts, did import these engines from England. They also made their own, such as these. And there's a lot of little differences between them, so I had to figure out which details were correct. And after looking around at a couple different pictures and comparing it, a later rebuilt version of one of these engines, uh, I determined that there was definitely these two little pipes, a little dome with a whistle on top, or it might be a whistle, I have no idea what it is. And this little dome thing? I don't know. Uh, and then once I finally just settled on the design, I took a double look to make sure I had everything right. There's a lot of, for such a small engine, I managed to get a lot of little details in there. There's two levers for the uh, engineer to use. There's two little gauges. There are these two little levers on either side, and they're actually connected to the valve here in front on the real thing not on this, this is too small. But uh, in theory, you could actually operate the locomotive by rocking these levers back and forth. And that was a design that, that came from uh, Stevenson's planet design. So I just incorporated them because there was nothing else over there. Uh, the locomotive does have, they don't move, but it does have rods between the wheels where the cylinders would be, and you can see the cylinders up front. Uh, the tender is actually, the base of the tender is 8 wide, but the rest of the tender itself is 7 wide, which I decided to go with because it didn't have the exposed springs like the uh, two Housatonic engines I made. Uh, and I ended up just sort of opting for a green tender because I think <coughs> every single locomotive, based on the planet's design, seemed to have a green tender and I didn't want to waste time trying to figure out what else I should do. But uh, I also finally have two cars for them, for all four of my locomotives. Uh, the first car is sort of a generic baggage slash box car. I'm not sure what they're using it for in 1830, the late 1830s. But uh, obviously the locomotive is too small to fit a motor. So my hope with this guy is eventually <coughs> to stick a motor inside it, there is gearing 
on the uh, on one of the axles that I can use later to uh, link a motor inside it. And the doors do open. Passenger car at the end. I need to make a couple more of these because I like a nice long passenger train. But uh, it's sort of based on a number of pictures of uh, passenger cars I had seen from the period. It has a uh, a revolutionary new thing that ha that uh, puts the wheels on these two bogies, which uh, at the time it was revolutionary, because it meant you could have a nice long car and it could still go around turns. Uh, the inside is somewhat detailed. It does have a couple seats, and at one end there is a stove to keep passengers warm, because in New England you actually need that really badly. Those stoves would end up causing a number of fires, even into the later steam era, because that was the only easy way to heat the car until it became possible to pipe steam from the local. And that's uh, Stonington and two cars.